All right, welcome everyone to NFT Web3 Community Service Hour. We are live, broadcasting from Philadelphia on episode number 38. Main topic is a new bug that just got announced in Open Zeppelin. All right, the official drink of the day is Tenjaku Whiskey. Some good whiskey we got from Pennsylvania. From Japan, but bought it in Pennsylvania. Right, get a nice double there and uh, go to town. Smooth in that Japanese whiskey with not a lot of flavors, you know, not like all over the place like direct. Cool, so has anybody else seen this news from Open Zeppelin? Let me introduce it. So let's go find the, yeah. So this one's got affected versions is less than 473. So let's go find the affected code, show it to you, run a demo, you know, whatever we got until we get bored of that. So here's 473. And then we go to 472, and we view the code. Oh. ECTSA dot sol. Okay, so here's the vulnerable code, and we'll just go through it, and we'll see which one we're looking at. The function dot recover and try recover are vulnerable. So let's go find recover. You want to introduce what ECDSA is? Yeah. So ECDSA in general is cryptography. This is how public key and private key works on Ethereum. You can use it for other stuff too, but the basis of Ethereum is ECDSA. So that means when you have a key, let's go find a key real fast. So this is an ECDSA public key. Not really, but sort of. And then there's a private key behind it. You can use the private key to generate the public key. You can sign a message with the public key. No, you can sign a message with the private key and verify it against the public key. All right, so that's what ECDSA is. Now, you can when you sign a message, when you create a transaction on Ethereum, Tron, Arbitrum, whatever, um, that message is using ECDSA, using your private key. When you sign a message, the message is using your private key. When you're on chain and you're reviewing a message, well, we've got to have a way to do that. So EVM has a way to do that. And in Solidity, there's a wrapper around it. And Open Zeppelin library has this. Open Zeppelin contracts library has this. Their library is called ECDSA. There's an issue with that library. So we're going to go find that specific function and then we're going to, you know, do what we do here. So this library, this specific function in this library has an error. Um, I don't know if error is the right word, but uh, that's an unexpected situation, unintended situation. Okay, so this function, try recover, has a problem. You're going to create, create something like some hash, and then you're going to sign it off-chain, and then you're going to verify it on-chain in a smart contract. And so this is a function somebody might use to do that. There's two different ways you could call this function, and uh, if we're creative, we could see a problem with that. So check the signature link. So basically, there's this thing called RSNV, and it has to do with elliptic curve cryptography. That's the E 
in ECDSA, that's elliptic curve, and then the cryptography. And so basically there's a point, so this is geometry, there's an X and a Y. There's an X and a Y point here, and this point is, uh, you know, with magic and math and nerd stuff, is going to verify that your transaction is authorized. It's an X and a Y, but the Y is going to be signed, and the X, you could, I'm sorry, the X is the, the input, and then the Y is kind of the output of this function, and then there's, there's two points. So you could guess, you know, you, there's only one point here. There's a, this is a special point on the left, but for all the other ones, there's a, there's a symmetrical points. So there's an X and a Y. So basically, you're going to have an R and an S, which are the inputs, and then the V is going to be a bit. So you got a byte, you got a, you got a word, a word, and a bit. So that'll be 32 bytes plus 32 bytes plus one bit, and then a bit rounds up to a byte. So that's either, oh, that's fancy. Um, so there's two different ways you could do it. Um, now, the one way that you could encode this information is using three different, you can use 32 bytes and 32 bytes and one byte. So that's 32 plus 32 plus one is 65 bytes. The other way is, is if you shove the V and the S into the 32 bytes, there's a way to do that, and the result is uh, 32 plus 32 equals 64. So there's two different ways you can encode this, either the 64 or the 65. So what that means is there's two different ways to encode the same signature. So that's important. Got a hash and a signature together. And really, let me get this thing. Okay, so now we've got a 65 byte encoding. Okay, and then we've got that goes in there. This is not nerd time, so you're gonna understand this and uh, you're gonna get it. We've got a 64 byte encoding. And then this thing is gonna go inside of here. And then it's also gonna go inside of here. It's gonna go inside. And then the result is gonna to go to some smart contract. And what is the smart contract gonna do? What is any smart contract? Just yell something out where you might wanna verify something. Maybe with a signature. Okay, mint NFTs. And we would be using a signature because that would be something like a mint pass, lazy mint, something like that. Cool. So, really? So then we're going to take this thing and we're going to send it to the mint pass contract. So that means we could either use the 65-byte encoding or the 64-bit encoding, 64-byte encoding. That's the problem. That's, this design is a failure. This is already a failure. Why, why would they have that? There's two different ways to encode things. So you can encode it this way is, quote, the standard way. You can encode it this way, which is, quote, the efficient way. And they're both fine. There's nothing wrong with encoding it the one way or the other way. The problem is that they happen to have one function that it can accept either type of encoding. And the result is going to be, you know, it's going to put a yes here. So the, it's going to be yes. The function is going to spit out yes. So the problem, and if you're making a smart contract, there's a specific feature where this becomes a problem. And the feature is related to it has to do specifically with replay. So maybe you're going to mint an NFT, but they only want you to mint it once. So sometimes the way people will do this is they will take two things. They're going to take the hash. Okay. So there's going to be a hash, and there's going to be a signature, and then there's going to be this thing, this encoding, and then it's going to have an output, which is a yes. This is the... This is going to be the open C land. So this is going to be, this is done off chain. This is done on OZ contracts. And then this is done in some mint pass on chain. All right. 
And so off chain, they're going to sign this thing, then the contract is going to validate it, and then your contract is going to it's going to mint it. Okay, so we want to prevent them the same signature from being minted twice. So the one way you could do it is you could take this hash. So somehow it's going to validate this transaction. Now the problem is, if it validates the hash, this is this is good. So doesn't matter if it's encoded at 65 byte or 64 byte. As long as it validates, then when it's when it's minted, it's going to remember already minted hash. Okay, so this is cool. Here's where the problem is. So let's go to the attack. The attack is when instead of looking at the hash, it looks at the encoded hash. Now here's where you've got attack. You've got the hash 65 byte version, and then you've got hash the 64 byte version. So if you're looking at the output here, there's two different outputs, and which means if you're going to only allow each output to be used once, then you might allow the same transaction to go through twice. Yes. So, yes. So they could, the person who's using this function, the function is called um, try recover or recover. So the user here could have just specified we want to use the 64 byte or the 65 byte version. And in fact, there is another function in the same contract that does that. So that's the safe version. So this is the messy version, which accepts any type of signature. And then it can either be 65 byte or 64 byte. And then there's another version where it takes the hash, the R, and the VS. So this is the 64 byte version. Or there's another version here that takes the V, the R, and the S as three different inputs. And that's the 65 byte version. So that's the difference. Right. So people that are using that function are probably not thinking about, this is called malleability. Malleability is when you sign a thing and then someone else signs a different thing using your key. And it makes it look like you signed it. That's a problem. And so this documentation here doesn't say anything like that. If you use this function, you know, malleability could happen. Actually, it says right here. Let's see. This function is, this is the old version, 472. All right. So it says it does say it here. The EC recover opcode allows malleability non-unique signatures and rejects them by requiring the S value to be the lower. Okay, so there's, there's two different types of malleability here. There's the one that it tells you about, which is the 27 and the 28. And then the second one is that there's two different versions of the input. So it tells you about this. So Open Zeppelin failed to, you know, they're talking about one type of malleability and they're not talking about the second kind. So even if this was like a XKCD, you forgot to read the documentation, one of these things going on, the toaster stabbed me, did you read the documentation? No, click. Even if it's that, it's not that because Open Zeppelin contracts failed to even tell you anything about this. So um, we're going to consider this as a vulnerability of open Zeppelin contracts. And that is how they classified it themselves. So I think that's a fair assessment. And there you go. So that's the problem. So let's, so let's go see if we can do We could make a demo right now. We could implement this real fast and we could see the problem. We can do a quick search, quick, I mean quick this time, um, and see if anybody has this problem out there in the wild. And then um, let's do that first so we can do ether scan. We're not going to try too hard with this, but uh, we'll do the contract search. This is nice. So, interest. So we're going to look for something that has a recover 
and then not a VRS. It's going to have a cover, a hash, and a signature. We could even search. And that's even best practice. You shouldn't even be using the vulnerable function. All right, so recover hash. Anybody remember Google code search back in the day? Can you see her? Automated code optimizer. Okay, it doesn't look like a deployed contract. I guess we can limit. Like the search by most stars. So here's one. So this looks like this one is checking that it's signed by the owner. So that one doesn't really, it's probably not going to be vulnerable because having the owner, you know, the, the owner probably doesn't have a restriction of using this signature only once. So we can skip that. Trapia Metaverse. Okay. So this one only allows, so this one's not using the second half of the problem. It's not, it's, this might be vulnerable to something else, but if it's signed, then it's going to, it's going to go through. Permit, what does it do? This is vulnerable in a different way. Okay, so timestamp, is this a deadline? What deadline? There's deadline, okay, owner, spender, owner, operator. Hash is, use knots. They're putting two different, so they're doing a 65 byte signature, that's not a problem. Two user multi sig, these guys know what they're doing, so it's probably fine. Mock, we don't hack mocks. Test that, Vite NFT, okay. And it is valid signature. Okay, so this is possibly effective. But that's just a mock, so. So, is this, um, seven, twelve, seven, one, is valid signature Oh, using magic values. Stole this idea from ERC721. Nice. Okay, so we just found an issue here with this advisory. So that's good to know.
Okay, cool. So we just found a, you know, a new vulnerability and disclosed it to Open7 contracts. So that was cool. Okay, and then all right, we're doing pretty good here. Crypto hunt down. Again, it'd be really nice if I could just search like only the important contracts. This one's not affected. Hike. Affected. Good point. Yeah, we were we were definitely borking today. We borked. Well, let's just write out. Let's wrap it up today. So let's let's do our official tweet here and uh, spell it out for Magic King. What's up, sixty one twenty? 